which is only one way to do that. And that's to the belief on Christ along with keeping the commandments. So that's only one path towards life. That's why Christ said this. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. People say that you're proud when you make a statement like this, but it's just the truth. They didn't make the rules up. So there's many, many ways to die, but only one way to live forever. That's why Christ said this in the scriptures. You might remember this verse uh, from during your times when you were attending that church. I'm not sure how often you guys read the scriptures or what you guys studied. But check out what Christ said. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. So Christ said, enter ye at the straight gate. You know what the word straight means, right? Yeah, narrow, exactly. So enter ye at the narrow gate. So something is narrow, it's like hard to get in, right? We don't. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So wide is the way, and broad is the gate that leadeth unto destruction, read. And many there be which go in thereat. And many there be which go in there at. So you got many people that are going into all different types of religions. Whether it's Christianity, Catholicism, right? Protestantism, right? Which are forms of Christianity. Different paths of Islam, Hinduism, Shintoism, right? The list goes on. You got many different paths that people say, well, we're all serving the same God. We just call them different stuff. It doesn't make any sense. How are you going to have a, a, an organization, you a person, and everybody's calling you, you know, one guy calls you Rob, another guy calls you Steve, another guy calls you Andrew. That doesn't make any sense. We do that with God, and we say it's okay. That's, like I said, but that's just lies we've been taught that they call, they call it a collectivism, where everybody believes that you can all get to the same God, but doing different things to get there. That's not how the God of the Bible works. So he said, wide is the way that leads to destruction, and may there be which go in there at. We don't... Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So he says, straight and narrow is the way leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, right? Let's forget the expression that Christ said, many are called, few are chosen. You heard that before? That's what, that, that's, what that's coming in. So Christ said, many are called, few are chosen. So now, to deal with the truth is the straight and narrow. So that's what we got to come back to scriptures and deal with and question everything that we have heard or have taught, every rumor that we've heard, and then say, okay, what does the scripture say about this thing? What does the scripture say about being born again? What does that mean? What does the scripture say about baptism? What does the scripture say about other religions? What does the scripture say about how to treat my body, etc. and so forth? Right? We have to question these things, but they go back to the scriptures as the record. So now, Back to what you were saying, what would you say is an example of something that man did to the Bible that twisted it up? Just just one verse, or maybe one chapter, maybe a subject man if you're not sure of a verse, where you say it's been twisted, because I'm telling you, you go into the scriptures themselves, you'll be surprised what you'll find. But without a guide, how, how would you know? You might just have to luck up and land on the right verse, because you'd be surprised what's in the Word. Subject, it's a subject. Oh, Nabiya, by the way, what's your name, brother? Alfonso? Okay, it's my brother, Bukwad. Okay, how much time you got? Okay, okay, cool, so, good. That's honest. No, that's a good thing. We, we need more of that. What we, what we deal with day in and day out when we're out here is people just talk off the top of their head. Well, I know the Bible says this. I know the Bible says that. We like, show us. They run away. So you don't have proof. Okay, what are you about to say? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. You read the scriptures. The scriptures say, get John 7, 24 real quick. And then, and then, but that, uh, then after we read this, I just want to deal with what we started off with, which is um, Joseph and Mary had sex to have Christ. Yeah, I can show it in scripture. Because when you go into Christ coming into the earth, it was a, a, a promise made to a man named David. 
Oh no, the, the Holy Spirit definitely was, was what allowed the whole thing to happen, but it was still the seed of a man that he came from. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh -huh. It was definitely a miracle. It was definitely of the spirit, well, but, 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 that, the but, that, but that doesn't disqualify the flesh aspect of it. But I'm gonna show you the scriptures that what the Most High made a promise to a man named David. I'm gonna show you. So now, first, read John 7:24. This is on judging. This is the good verse to have when it comes to judging. You're gonna judge anybody because you judge this morning, you judge this afternoon, you're judging right now. You, you stop to listen based on the judgment from what you wear to who you're going to talk to, to which way you're going to go home. Am I going to catch this bus or that bus? Am I going to talk to this person and that person? These are all judgments. People say you can't judge. It's ridiculous. You don't judge. You don't do anything. Even if you don't do anything, that's a judgment. Right, but now here's how we're supposed to judge, right? Call Chad Reader, brother. John 7 and verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance. The Bible says judge not according to the appearance, read. But judge righteous judgment. What's it say in the world? Won't judge a book by its cover? So it says judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Meaning what? If you're gonna make a judgment, just make sure you check the situation out. Right? Like you know, watch court you watch court shows? Right? They don't just say, oh, rule in favor of the plaintiff or the defendant. They just say no, present your evidence, present your evidence, let me see what's going on here. Paperwork says this, paperwork says that. Rule in favor of the plaintiff, rule in favor of the defendant. You got that evidence. Right? That's judgment. So now Christ said the same thing. So now as you go, because I see so you got you got um, a couple minutes, get Romans one and three. This is the uh, uh, one of the key verses you want to read just to show that Christ, the way he came into earth, was by how everybody else came into earth. Right? A man and woman lay together. She conceives a child, and they have a child. Romans 1 and 3. Concerning a son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. See that there it says he was made of the seed of David. <laughs> see, there you go. See that? I, I told you to be surprised. It is the King James Version Bible. We can read it in the Hebrew, too. I'm going to read that. I'm going to read that. We can read it in the Greek, too. Okay, then. I'm going to holler at you. check out the flyer. Our information is on the back. We hope they catch that bus. Like I said, this thing is serious, man, because most people don't know that to be a fact. Because they've been raised to think that what? Mary just can see the child. She woke up one day, or one, you know, some days went by, and she realized, huh, I'm a child. And Joseph, he said, oh, you're a child, it's not mine. 